Greetings everybody. Today we're going to speak on Victory Living number three. Why the Holy Spirit is given to us. Well, Acts 1 verse 8 says, And when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, you shall be my witnesses in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and unto the ends of the earth. This is the reason why the Holy Spirit is given to us. So that we can connect with God in prayer and hear the promptings and leading of the Holy Spirit. Let's go on to our next scripture. Acts 2, 14 to 19. But Peter, standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice and addressed them men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem. Let this be known to you and give ear to my words. For these men are not drunk as you suppose, since it's only the third hour of the day. But this is what was uttered through the prophet Joel. And in the last days it shall be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. And your sons and daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even on my male servants and female servants in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy, and I will show you wonders in the heaven above and signs in the earth below. This is a wonderful gospel that leads us out to bring people to repentance, to say, what shall we do to become Christians? And the Holy Spirit will lead us to the needs of the people, what we must do in each circumstance. You know, the genealogies of the Old Testament were given for a reason. And one of the reasons, amongst others, is that when the missionaries went out, there's actually a clue or a opening point to give the gospel message to every people group of this world. And the one people group are very interested in their genealogies. So this scripture was able to lead them to Christ. And we'll take an example of one of Jesus. John 9, 6-7 Having said these things, he spat on the ground and made mud with the saliva. Then he anointed the man's eyes with the mud and said to him, Go wash in the pool of Siliam, which means scent. So he went, washed, and came back seeing. Well, the missionaries went out to the far east, and there was this one people group who spit on their hands and then touched the other one with the spit. And the missionaries noticed this, and uh, they thought, well, let's give them this scripture of Jesus spitting and making the clay of spittle and putting it on the eye of that man who then had to go and wash in the river and came back seeing. Well, when they said this to the people, the people said, Jesus knows about using spit. He's one of us. He knows our culture. They all accepted Jesus as their personal Lord and Saviour. Acts 2, 37 to 39. And Peter said to them, Repent and be baptised, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is for you and for your children and for all who are afar off, everyone, whom the Lord God calls to himself. So the Holy Spirit is given to us, to every people, every culture, every country, every nation, to bring people to know the true and living God who created the heavens and the earth. And he's speaking out to you as well. And I'd like to finish with a testimony. I got an email from a man called Ernest Mesador from a country called Haiti. 
inviting me to go and preach the gospel message and I accepted. Well, we flew over to the main capital and I put my main case and key to stay at the airport because from there we were going to fly to Miami and from there to Pittsburgh. Well, and as he did arrive and I was pleased to see him and we get in the car and we drive through a very busy town and I thought, gosh, this is more like Nigeria. I thought we were going to South America. That's how little I knew about Haiti. Very similar to Africa. Same roads as we are used to. People working, sewing, doing their businesses. And the market's coming up. The next thing, we leave this town and we go up a very steep donkey track up into the mountains in this four-wheel drive vehicle and we drive eight hours over high mountains and what I saw on the way were so amazing beautiful views we came to this market well I was amazed It is market day. They brought their wares to market on all these donkeys. The saddles are very interesting the way that they are tied on. They're all made of wood, which are placed over with a crupper and a breastplate and just a string girth. They are selling rice and all sorts of vegetables. There's a chicken for sale, extravagant fruits, frying food, and others bringing their wares to market. Oops. It's interesting how they use straw to take the weight of the saddle. It is the softest stuff they have. We then continue and eventually we come down to the mountains to a place called Pillay Town which looked to me like a western town. There was one street only with hitching posts along the side of the road with donkeys tied to them. They went to meet someone there and this person came out and got into the car with us and we went down to this river and a driver and this man got out with a long stick and put it in the river. I suppose they were trying to mark how deep the water was to see if it was safe enough to pass through. For suddenly they get back in their car and proceed to drive through this river which was a lot deeper than I thought with the water ramming up this to the side of the door and I wound the window up in case it came in. other side and we drive up even worse mountain passes than the ones we had left it took three or four or five going up going backwards going forward going backwards to get round some of these very very tight s bend curves in the road 
we eventually come to a place they say we can go no farther we've got two canyons to walk through I thought, oh no, I brought no walking shoes. All I've got is my sandals. And I have to go down with no path, no steps, down the gorge, across a little river, up the other side, and then down another gorge, across another little river, and up the other side. By the time this was all happening, it is pitch dark. We arrive. They say, would you like to preach straight away or change first? I said, oh, I'd love to change first. So they showed me to my, the little hut where I was going to stay. There was a bed there. There was no glass in the windows. They had wooden shutters as a window. And I quickly changed and tried to wash my feet and sandals and face as best I could, brush my hair and went to preach. After I preached, I called the sick forward and I start to lay hands as I prayed for the sick and the leaders start to argue. I thought, I'm doing something wrong. Well, I prayed for about four or five with the laying of her hands and I thought, I've got to stop. So I closed the service and now there's arguing is getting louder and they sh I go back to my room, I shut the shutters, I lock myself in and I call out to God, look God, what am I doing wrong? I've done something wrong. They are fighting over me, they're shouting, and I'm here all alone, please show me. And the Lord said, do not lay hands on anybody. Just preach the gospel message. Well, the next day, they, we, a whole load of us went down to the beach. It was the most beautiful beach I've ever seen. We left the car up at the top and we've had to walk the last kilometre or so to get here, but it's certainly worth it. And I saw this beautiful shell. I said, could I have one of those gorgeous shells, show you all around it. They said, help yourself. So I picked up this beautiful shell and put it in the rucksack. After the beach, we went back and I prepared myself for the next services. And on the third day, which was the last day, I was to then preach my last sermon. So I did this and I thought to myself, I haven't called anyone forward. Is there anyone sick? Please come forward now. We'd love to pray for you. And no one came forward. That's strange. I knew there were more sick people. And then one comes up and says, I was healed by the hearing of the word. Wow. Another one came up. She says, and I was healed when I received Jesus as Lord and Saviour. And another one comes forward and says, I was also healed by the hearing of the word. Another one comes forward. I was healed when Suzanne laid hands on me on the Friday night. Another one. I was healed by the hearing of the word. And so it went on. And the people then erupted in glorious praise and worship and dancing. Just look at this video. <laughs> Well, after this, I went to the interpreter and I said, please, will you tell me what's going on? He says, well, I can now. I thought, that's strange. He says, we invited you over to find out who is the real God, the Christian God or voodoo. Oh, and we were not impressed by the first night when you laid hands on people. After all, the voodoo priests can do better than that. 
they blow their curses to wherever they want and those curses work but as you carried on preaching the word of God and the people were healed through the hearing of the word of God or as they received Jesus as Lord and Savior that proved to us that the Christian God is the true God and myself and this whole community have received Jesus as a personal Lord and Savior. That is why we are rejoicing in so much joy today. I said, wow, Lord, you have done it again. I did not know I was in voodoo territory I did not know why I had come to Haiti. I did not know what I was doing, but through the leading of the Holy Spirit and obeying Him, God achieved His work in Haiti. And if you have not yet received Jesus as Lord and Savior, or been baptized in the Holy Spirit, now is a good time to do it. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, I come to you as I am. Thank you for dying for me on the cross. Please forgive me every sin I've ever done. I choose to follow you in your righteousness from this moment on. Thank you for forgiving me. Please come into my heart and life as my Lord and Saviour. I receive you now. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Remember, the Lord loves you. God loves you.